Hello all, I'm Michael. Um, I am here to tell, give you an up updates and stories on my car. Um, it is a 1989 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme that I'm changing up, updating, making changes to, and hopefully uh, bringing it back to life. And the reason that and the engine in this car runs pretty good. It's only got... Let's see... 55,000 miles on it. Um, I've had the car since December of last year. Of, uh, uh, or since... Or since, I should say, January of, uh, 2010. Um... Uh, it's been through a lot. Uh, in fact, it almost had, uh, in fact, it was a time where I thought I wasn't going to get back up and on the road at one time. Um, this car was first owned by an older woman and then owned by its second owner who proceeded to hit a parked car with it. Anyways, this car is nicknamed Rocket Rod 1. After the after the theme Disneyland ride that's now defunct, however, um, I think it fits the car pretty well. And here we go. Now, first of all, it has the full digital dash with all the gauges and everything. And I'm going to start the car up and give you give you a little. Just a peek at the startup sequence. And we blow up the windows because it is a little cold outside. Oh yeah, and that sound you just heard, my driver's side window needs to have a gear replaced. Because apparently somehow the, the gear is not stripped. Anyway, that's the dash. All lit up. And the car is running. I don't have that much fuel left, but yeah. Now, also, this is my first car with steering wheel controls. On the left hand side are the controls for the climate control. On the right hand side are the controls for the radio. The the right hand controls don't work because a thing about this car is it uses ENC data bus to control both the steering wheel, both the climate control temperature, and uh, and and uh, to also control the radio, whereas in the newer vehicles, they're completely separate animals. Oh, now over to my over to the right of the dash is something that you wouldn't normally see in this position. It's in the radio's position. It's the driver information system computer. This computer can give you things like fuel range, fuel economy gauges information, oil life meter, fuel usage, can also give you destination trip information, tells you how long this thing has actually been online. It's been on for 64 hours, 4 day, uh, 64 day, uh, yeah, 64 hours, 4 minutes, 30, so it's like it's a county. Your average speed that you travel at, which mine is 26 miles per hour. Uh, yeah, and of course, it switches from English to metric here, but also works with the English metric switch on the dash. Um, I always keep it on fuel range, as per usual. Um, now, as uh, as much as the steering wheel can control the climate control, this is a digital climate control. One of my first vehicles with a digital climate control. It works very well, excellently. Except my AC is currently out at the moment because the AC compressor actually the clutch frame went out in it. So right now I've got a texture pulley in place. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn off this stuff and bring you on to something else. Now here is a radio uh, on the dash 
that no one said would ever work in this car. It's the Saturn Panasonic 2004 Ion or 2005 Ion MP3 radio. I turn it on. As you can see, it comes on just fine. It's not locked because it doesn't use stuff like our Let me turn that down. Um, there's no text info on that track. Let's get a track up, track up with info on it. Info. There we go. It brings up the folder name and then, of course, the file name. Now, these radios are said to theoretically use the data bus to turn on, but as you can see here, it's in an older car that obviously doesn't use, doesn't really use the data bus except for steering wheel controls to the radio. Yeah, and yeah, it's working fine. Now, it is true that the wires are in a weird place on this vehicle. That goes without, that's... Yeah, unbelievably true and, excuse me, very odd. Um, alright, below is my cup holder. Now, I had to buy a cup holder for this because usually these cars come with a cup holder in their center console right here. Mine was broke, my cup holder was broken out of it. Um, and right now... Right now, this car is undergoing some restoration project work. What you've seen is the first part of the changes being made to my car. And I hope to bring you many more to come. And I will, chronol I will try to chronologically get them recorded for you and let you all know. If you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to ask me. And I hope hope to like show some more pictures and videos and hope to eventually get this car fixed up to be a show car eventually. Well, not quite a show car, but just really cool looking. Um, I want to get the original 1989 Cutlass Supreme Grills because right now this has the 88 Silver Grills on it that are ugly. I have to replace also the top bar and that front fiberglass, there's a front fiberglass holder for the headlights and everything in there. I have to replace that due to the person that hit a parked car with it. I have to replace the hood and both front fenders, although the front fenders are just dented on the sides. And uh, as you can see, I'm needing to repair the headliner. Yeah, that, yeah, it's kind of hitting down there. Um, And yeah, this and uh, and I love this car because it's seat six, which it's a Cutlass Supreme SL. Take note that the SL was actually a different model from the base. Um, it has a 3.1 liter engine in it, so a little more power there, and. And it's and it has power trunk, power windows, power door locks, and has remote keyless entry. Uh, believe it or not, the remotes are easier to program to these cars than people will tell you. There is a lead in the back. You touch that lead to a um, to a ground, and you can program the car rather easily, or program the remote rather remote or remotes rather easily. Um, let me turn off the radio real quick. Because I want to show you one other thing here. Now, just to show you that this all works in tandem. Yeah, the lights do dim and adjust and everything with the headlights. And that's how it's supposed to work.
Um, but yeah, and uh, and also I'm gonna give y'all a quick look at the engine, so I have to turn the lights on again, real quick. Yeah, that was a weird demo, I think. Okay. The reason I have to turn the lights on is because the under hood light in these cars did not get power unless your headlamps or parking lamps were turned on. And here goes. This is a three-point liter uh, multi-port fuel injected engine. As you can see, it's very, very clean. Um, I've used some engine wash on it, degreaser, because it was very, very dirty before. Now, the car is actually running pretty normal for its age at, like, about 22 years. Um, now, also, though, there's been some front-end damage. As you can see here from when the guy hit the parked car, I had to put spacers on the hood latch to get to come out far, far enough, had to replace the hood latch, and stuff like that. Um, if any of you want to ask me if I'm planning on selling this car, no I don't. I had originally an 88 Cutlass Supreme and this is an 89 a year later with a lot more advancements in it and I'm keeping it. <laughs> um, let me see here. I'm keeping it and fixing it up. And that's the ugly ass hood that was put on it. Anyway. Anyways, just thought I'd let y'all know what's going on. And I hope the car watch please show more of you later. And have a good night.